Happy Wednesday, everybody. Sorry, yesterday we had some appointments and we had um, some house showing, so we decided to just make sure we did a Facebook Live with you today. And here's our host, uh, Alan, make them for our pro. Say hi, Alan. Hello, good morning, Orlando, and happy Halloween. This Absolutely. is the day for all the kids to be out getting that candy. So that's an awesome day. Beautiful weather here in Orlando. So we know of a lot of people transitioning in their lives uh, and relocating to the Central Florida area. What do you have for us, Alan, for those people? We have 15 tips that you must know if you're considering relocating to the Orlando area. I think it's really important for everybody to know if you're relocating because I get a lot of questions and calls every day on well tell me about Orlando so basically what I want to do is I want to tell you about what is Metro Orlando Metro Orlando is a large area all the way from Windermere to Oviedo to Lake Mary to Winter Park to Winter Garden to Winter Springs to Lake Nona which is the largest growing part of Orlando at this particular stage. So if we go into it a little bit more, I wanna give you one, if you're planning on relocating here to Orlando, think about the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is 3.7%, which is awesome. We are under the national average for the unemployment rate, uh, which is huge. Uh, our population is growing so fast that, again, the home inventory is low uh, because we have so many people relocating. So if you're considering relocating, here's some tips. Number one, get to know Orlando in its current state. The metro Orlando population has grown approximately 2.4%, no. excuse me, 2.4 million uh, residents and consist of four counties um, in the general area Lake Orange Osceola and Lake Nona's continued growth makes our medical city community number one in growth in the Orlando area that's huge number two pick a neighborhood based on your lifestyle do you want rural do you want city do you want uh, urban living do you want a lot of acreage because that's very important when you're deciding where you want to live do you want a historic neighborhood um, consider Thornton Park downtown very historic you'll step back in time and walking through some of these old Mediterraneans and historic colonials that are just absolutely stunning and beautiful inside brick lined streets mature oak trees um, Adverse to when you come out to Lake Nona, it's a little bit newer area, but it's growing with mature landscaping and they're getting into doing a lot of upgrades, especially for you young professionals. Walking distance, if you're looking at, looking at something for walking distance, downtown, they have a lot of condos, townhomes, single family homes that are walking distance to all these shops. Uh, Lake Nona is building that as we go. They're building a large shopping plaza and medical city uh, to accommodate all the new medical practices that are coming into Orlando. So I think these are very important. If you think about you wanted a little bit larger home, you wanted to be on a lake, think about the areas of College Park. Um, despite its name, it's truly not just about a college town. College Park is gorgeous brick-lined streets again. Uh, it also has lakefront estates, which are, College Park is just south of Winter Park, and Winter Park is gorgeous. It's got million-dollar lakefront estates as well as some mid-priced homes as well. And if you were thinking about renovating and wanting to be someplace where you could walk to an avenue, and enjoy shops and so forth, that's Winter Park. Uh, so I think if you were looking something more of a suburban lifestyle and you know, then these areas I think you probably need to look at. Hunters Creek, it's a quiet community in Orange County. Um, I think it has just about 20,000 in population with a medium home price just above 240,000. Another great area is Oviedo, 
located in the eastern part. It's in Seminole County. Uh, super area, you get a little bit larger lots out there. And again, it's still very close to downtown. It has a great community feel. Medium income is 78,000. And it is just a wonderful area that you might want to think about living. Another great area, Heathrow. Heathrow, do you like golf? Do you love to play golf? If you love to play golf, Heathrow is one of the best golf courses I've ever played. Super area, that's north in Seminole County. Uh, and then as we go from there, you get into Lake County, but the population is just shy of 6,000 people in Heathrow. Um, they have a lot of different events going on. The home prices average around 370,000, so very, very feasible to live there. Um, another example that I want to bring up, if you're thinking about moving to Orlando, think about the jobs. If you don't have a job now, you'll have one soon. Our employment rate, unemployment rate is 3.7 percent. If, you, if you're thinking of moving to Orlando, look at all of these facts and figures first because that's what you're gonna to want to know before coming here. If you're coming here and you've got a real estate agent such as us, the Maycumber team or Tia, then we're gonna know this stuff and we're gonna pass it on to you. So I want to make sure, again, comment, like, and share because it's really important that the people that you know that might be relocating here get this information because we're always here to help you. Uh, the cost of living, a lot of people say, well, gosh, Orlando is probably a little bit of high cost of living. It's only a few percentage points less than the national average, and there are many Fortune 500 companies here. If you look at Tupperware, Tupperware, most people don't understand, but Tupperware is a large manufacturer. Uh, Darden Restaurants is here, and that's a large uh, restaurant chain. You also include um, some of the scientific companies such as Siemens and you also have Lockheed Martin here and you if you go a little farther to the east on the east coast you have SpaceX and you also have Duke Energy here so a lot of major companies are here based out of Orlando take advantage of no state income tax the lack of state income tax is really important when it comes down to what you're putting in your pocket every month. Um, and part to all the hotels here are awesome. You've got the Ritz-Carlton here, you've got the Marriott's here, um, gorgeous Central Florida golf courses within these hotel communities. Uh, second only probably to Las Vegas. And in addition, property taxes fall below national average, hovering around 0.97%. Um, sales tax for Florida will run you about 6.5%, depending on your county. I know Orange County is 6.5. The cost of living is slightly lower, 1.2 above the national average. That's a big point for you to take in. The biggest difference is being higher housing and transportation costs. Because, remember in Orlando, it's very broad area, it's, it's expansive. So depending on where you live and where you work, it could cost you more for transportation. Living costs are high in general. Number five, send your kids to the second largest university in the United States, University of Central Florida. My son goes there and he's majoring in polit political and computer science. Uh, which is a phenomenal field to be in as well. Uh, Bright, they have Bright Futures here in Florida, which is a program where you can get scholarships if you're relocating here and you live here. Bright Futures is a way that you can help pay for your college education. Uh, you also have Valencia Community College here. Automatic acceptance to UCF if you go to Valencia Community College first. Do a two-year program at Valencia. My younger son is doing that and he automatically goes to UCF for his business degree. And that also goes for Seminole State College too. That if you go Seminole there. State College is another one that does that with UCF. So UCF is getting really big. Number six, benefits of living near theme parks. Disney, uh, located 15 miles outside of Orlando. 
Uh, can't beat that for a weekend to get away with the kids. Uh, on top of Disney World and other parks contributing to the zero state income tax, these businesses usually offer their residents special pricing and discounts, which we do. We get quite a bit of discounts uh, being a resident. And Universal Studios offers residents three park passes for $31. Great thing for the kids. Um, I think if you're looking at the theme parks, you've got SeaWorld here, Universal Studios, Disney. Uh, there's all kinds of things, not only for employment, but for the family to do as well. So take that into account. Also, when we're talking about travel, you're, you've got several international airports here. You've got Sanford International Airport, Orlando International Airport, uh, Daytona International Airport. That's a big thing to know that you're, you're within communities that are very close to airports no matter where you're located. I think that's very important to know as well, especially for the people that are traveling constantly. We were just showing property to people relocating here from Atlanta and they say he travels three or four days a week and he wants to be near an airport. So we said, okay, here's the three airports that you have and showed them to him. Number seven, why do we have so many different winter names in Florida? So we have Winter Garden, Winter Park, Winter Springs. Well, a little bit of history be, is because all the northerners used to come down from the north and make it their winter home. So when they settled in these areas, they became these different names, which is a little bit of history for you. Uh, but all these communities are been restored to absolutely beautiful surroundings. Park Avenue and Winter Park is brick-lined streets with shops and restaurants. You got Winter Garden, which is one of the biggest newer communities in Central Florida uh, with thousands of homes, and they also have a little downtown. Um, also in Orlando, you have stuff for the people that love the outdoors, which is number eight. And let's face it, when you we're talking about, there's so many people become snowbirds and spend their winters in Florida because there's so much to love about having sunshine Love all year time. round. Um, it, it's really, really important that we focus on what Florida has to offer. Uh, you have cruise lines here as well, uh, which are easy access from Orlando to the cruise lines and the ports. Uh, we go over to the beaches all the time and we have dinner at the restaurants over there on the pier. So I think it's really, really important that no matter what you do, whether you want to be on larger lots or plots, or you want to be in more of a community, or you want to be in a historical area, uh, or you want to be on a golf course, or you want to be on a lake, they're all here for you. And number nine, you'll get lost again and again, um, but I think that if you look at east, north, west, south, you'll get lost in Orlando without knowing that our most prominent highways are 528, uh, Cimarron Boulevard, 417, which are typically, which is really interesting, they're also named two things. So 528 is the beach line. Cimarron is also called 436. 417 is, what is that, Tia? It's 417. It's a toll road. It's a and, toll road. Um, and four. I-4 is very odd because it goes, it says north and south, I-4, but it's actually east to west. So a lot of things in Central Florida, when it says east, it's actually north. When it says west, it's actually south. So Correct. don't get lost. Yeah, it's, it's easy to get lost here because, the one, the names of the streets typically always have two names. Uh, but... Once you get here and you learn how it works, typically I-4 is going to run uh, east and west, and you're going to have 417 that kind of cuts around in the middle of the state and connects in into I-4. Gets It's a loop. 528 does the same thing. 528 comes around and loops the other side. So it's not too hard to learn them once you're here. Number 10, you can actually find... Um, quaint homes. Quaint homes. Uh, you can, which everybody comes to Orlando thinking, well, we're going to be moving into a Mediterranean. Or we're going to be moving into here. 
Not necessarily. It's really important to know that you can find any type of home here, Mediterranean, quaint, modern. Um, the estates of Lake Nona right now are building modern homes. Uh, you'll, I think that Orlando has public transportation. You'll always get the best and be able to get around very easily. They have the Lynx buses. They have the rental bikes uh, downtown Sunrail. and Sunrail, uh, which is eventually going to go all the way from Orlando to Miami. Uh, so very important to know this. But, you know, again, there's number 12. Green is a big thing here, soaking up the sunshine, which is very, very important to know because solar powered is becoming the big thing. Uh, even they're even talking about wind power. Uh, so they're really talking about really turning Orlando a little bit more green. Number 13, sports fans. You have plenty to cheer about in Orlando. Not only now do we have the USTA Tennis Association, we have a soccer team, we have now a new national football team, not a national football league, but a new football league that's coming into Orlando. Uh, we also have kids, I mean, sports for the kids galore. Uh, all the junior sports as well. You got the uh, Disney World Wide World of Sports Complex. You got the Solar Bears ice hockey team at the Amway Center. So whatever type of sport that you want to get in, we have it here in Orlando. Number 14, arts are a big hit here. The Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts debuted in 2014 beautiful building downtown and they do everything from ballet to symphonies to orchestras um, just absolutely a stunning venue if you've not been to Orlando you'll definitely want to check that out um, let's see what else is downtown that we have we have outdoor live concerts downtown that the city puts on for free uh, so it's really interesting to go down there. They have some big time artists that play for free. Um, you can get some popcorn or you can, you know, catch, there's places where now we're doing catch a movie in the park. Where we're doing a, a movie in the park for all the kids. Uh, entertainment can be free or cheap. Uh, put it to you point blank. Uh, easy activity for the kids. Uh, sit on the lawn, enjoy a movie, enjoy music, enjoy a festival. Another great place is Lou Gardens if you just love to go and walk through the gardens and see the different plants and the flowers and it's just an awesome place to be. In fact Lou Gardens we were driving through yesterday and just love it. It's close to downtown, close to Lake Eola. Um, it kind of shows you how the locals live. I mean they're all outdoors, they're walking, they're enjoying the lakes. So a lot to do in Orlando. And I want to, again, say share, like, and comment on this Facebook page. If you have any questions, you can write Tia at Maycumber.com. Also, if you want to give me a call, you can reach us at 407-251-1314. And we would love to take you around, give you a tour of Orlando. My wife, Pam, is wonderful at touring you in Winter Park and Lake Nona and some of the areas that she knows like the back of her hand. It's just a great area to live. So we want you to uh, contact us if you're thinking about, um, you know, moving to Orlando or, you know, changing jobs or looking for anything that in an area that has more opportunity than where you live. Uh, and relocating here is amazing. We would love to help you. Alan's a pro and we are, will always be here to assist you however we can, whether you use us or not, we are here for you. What do you know, Alan? We know Orlando. And happy Halloween, everybody. Have a great Halloween. Be safe. Have a great week.